The Welsh Show is proudly sponsored by Music Wales, Wales' premier music company. Welcome back to The Welsh Show. Now, the other day, Paul went to meet a rather special visitor to Wales, so uh, let's see how he got on, possums. <laughs> For over 50 years, Australian Barry Humphreys' creation, Dame Edna Everidge, has been delighting audiences worldwide with her unique brand of humour and sharp-tongued wit. Later this year, she will embark on her farewell tour, along with Sulez Patterson, and she popped into the Wales Millennium Centre to give a special preview of the show. Arriving in style, Dame Edna greeted well-wishers, and I had a chat with her, but not before she took to the Glanford stage for an impromptu performance. Please be upstanding for the one and only, the inimitable. Edna, thank you so much for joining us on The Welsh Show. Welcome to Wales and welcome to the Wales Millennium Centre. Good evening to you, Paul, and good evening, Wales. <laughs> so, how have you enjoyed your stay in Wales so far? I've had a lovely time. I've heard you've been to the Senate already. Well, I've been spoiled. <laughs> I think Wales does that to you. Uh, I've always felt an affinity with Wales. I mean, although the gladiolus is my favourite flower, I've got a soft spot for the deaf. Of course. <laughs> and uh, these are very nice ones, given to me by a little flower girl this morning. And look, they're as fresh as you can imagine. Absolutely. And uh, now you're in Wales, I take it, are you going to be visiting uh, William and, and Kate this week? Well, yes, of course. But I have to keep my royal connections a little bit low key. I see. I see. You see, I promised really to. Um, well, I don't like to advertise my intimacy with the royal family, but I am close, close to them. And we know, of course, that you've been giving Kate some, some fashion tips. Well, I did, and I gave her some honeymoon tips, too. Oh, really? Uh, you know, oh, simple things like lights off, that <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> so the show comes to the Wales Millennium Centre, your farewell show as well, the Millennium Centre in on the 30th of October. The 30th of October, well, it's a little way off. Yes. But I'm excited already about it, particularly since today, Possums, I saw the Millennium Centre for the first time. And what a building. Mm -hmm. What a treasure. And it's purple. It is. It matches me. We were built in your honour, of course. Well, it was. <laughs> Mr Adams, who was the Welsh architect, have you had him on the show? Not yet. Not you yet. ought to. We should. He's created the most important modern building in Wales. And um, he told me that in anticipation of my visit, he would make the building Edna friendly. And, it's and he's done it. it. And it certainly is. And you have a huge welcome, a huge warm welcome when you turn up this, uh, this afternoon at the centre. Obviously, everyone's really, really eager to see the show when it comes here on October the 30th. And uh, what can everybody expect from the show? Dinner? They can expect probably the most joyous, laugh filled evening of their lives. Now, this might sound a little conceited when I say this, but it's true. I can't help the truth, can I? Can I, Paul? <laughs> Absolutely not, no. It is a show that makes people laugh. And it gives a guarantee. If you do not collapse with laughter every 30 seconds, money back. Money back. What show offers that? I don't know of any show. I'm, well, <laughs> you, I'm not saying you get the money back. You can ask for the money back. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Dave Mendes, thank you so much for joining us on The Welsh Show. We really look forward to the, sh the full show, October 30th through to November 2nd, here oh, at the Wales Paul, Millennium Centre. thank Center. you for giving my, my show a plug, but I'll be plugging <laughs> Wales wherever I go, and I'm keeping these deafs as long as possible in memory of a wonderful day here. Thank you. Thank you, Dave Mendes. 
And to book tickets to see Dame Edna at the Millennium Centre, just go to the website on screen now. Oh, she's a legend. Brilliant. Absolutely. <laughs> now, The Voice is back on our, our screens, are you fans? Yeah, you know, it's uh, more credibility than, than the X Factor, I think. You know, we've always had a bit of an issue with the X Factor, that it's a lot of stage stuff, yeah. and, and so but The Voice gets round that with the way that they do it, so yeah, it's been good so far. And with Danny being on it from the script, there's no way I can't watch it in our house with Emma, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, big fan. She's a big fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Welshies are doing really well. Yeah. We're talking about Ragsy, of course. Yeah, um, Ragsy. We, we talked to him uh, not so long ago, and, and it's a case of numbers because, uh, you know, the, the, the bigger number of Welsh people in there, the more chance of a Welsh winner. Exactly, yeah. I so. Yeah. But he's got an amazing voice, and uh, he's voice. been known to break microphones with that powerful voice of his. So I would say for me, and he's, he's funny as well, he's got a great character. Yeah, well, yeah, he? yeah, funny, yeah. Isn't he? yeah. He's definitely one of my favourites. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Elise Evans, she got all four judges to turn round when she did her audition, yeah. then she got knocked out the following week. Yeah, real shame. Typical, but you had a chat with her to see what she's up to at the moment. Yep. I think we should see her audition first, though, shouldn't we? Absolutely. Sometimes I get a feeling, yeah. Fresh from The Voice, Elise, welcome and well done for getting so far on that really hard competition. So how was it for you? It was amazing, um, by far the best thing I've ever done, the most amazing thing ever. Um, you know, I'll never be able to top that. Yeah, out of, was it 30,000 people who auditioned, only 48 got through and you were one of the special 48. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. So when you actually do the blind audition, is that literally the first time that you see the coaches? That genuinely is the first time. Um, the first time I saw Thomas Bates, I turned around. <laughs> uh, it is, honestly, because we, we were all wondering, all the contestants were all chilling backstage, thinking, do you, want, do you reckon we meet him? And, and everyone was like, oh, we must, you must see them walking past. Nope. And so when, you, when you're there singing away, and all of a sudden a chair turns around and it's Tom Jones looking at you, how on earth do you carry on singing? I'm lucky. <laughs> lucky that I did. I'm really lucky that I did. And you know, there was a bit, and I'm glad they cut it out. I'm really, really glad because um, I looked like an idiot. <laughs> um, you turned around, nearly dropped the microphone, like, oh my god, do the funny dance. Um, it, it was amazing, and I don't know how I carried on. I really <laughs> do not know. So, of course, not only did Tom Jones turn around for you, but all four coaches turned around. So, what on earth made you pick Sir Tom Jones as your coach? He's been like my hero all my life, and, and to see him, I'm like, oh, it's Tom, I can't watch. <laughs> I gotta go with Tom. I have to. I have to, because, and, um, you know, I wouldn't change my decision. And of course, you actually got up to have a night out with Sir Tom Jones in Covent Garden? Yeah, he took us out to, to uh, Covent Garden, uh, the hospital club. Brilliant. Um, hired a room up there, and um, it was all off camera, and it was all just bonding, and, and he, you know, there was an open bar, which is great. So, out of 30,000 applicants, 48 got through, including your good self, of course. So, how long and what is the process of, of getting to the actual blind audition stage? Uh, we went through a lot, obviously, because they want, they want good singers, you know what yeah. I mean? They want, they want to make sure that you're, you're prepared, you're good. Um, and I think I started the audition process in July, um, and then obviously the, the blinds were filmed in December. Right. Uh, so it was, it was quite a long, a long process of back and forth to London um, and, and meeting all the, you know, the producers and things and to make sure that you were, you were good for it, really. And obviously this was filmed back in February, so you've had to keep it a secret of how well you've done all this time. Yeah, and obviously after December, when the lines were filmed, you're on such a high, because the most yeah. amazing thing is ever. My audition couldn't have gone better, my, you know, the blind mm. audition. And to come away from that going, oh my God, I can't tell anyone, <laughs> uh, was awful. Um, and hard, and really mm. hard, but then it, to watch it all back on TV was, was crazy. Yeah, and so you did fantastically well on The Voice, so what's next for Elise? Where do you go from here? For me, um, I'm writing and continuing to write a lot of songs and, and, and hopefully getting them recorded and put together in some form um, because I love to write. Um, writing is probably more of a passion than, than singing, probably. I love to write. 
Well, you've done yourself proud. Well done. We're all very proud of you. You've done fantastically well. Congratulations. And we wish you all the best for the future. You're a fantastic character, fantastic <laughs> singer as well. Uh, really proud of you. Well done with Thank getting you. so far on The Voice. And thanks for coming in. Oh, she's a lovely girl. Yeah, great voice as well. Very good. Now, Jagger, last time I saw you, you were looking to buy a speedboat. Mm. How was the midlife crisis going, mate? It continues. <laughs> um, I went... So I, I, I like, he's, he's right, though. I didn't get a speedboat, uh, and then I went to a jet ski, didn't get one of those, then I wanted a motorbike, and I got one of those. Yeah. Did right. you? Mm. He tried his uh, white leathers on the other day for the first time. It looked like a chubby evil can evil. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that looked like awful can awful. I don't know about anything else. And how does your wife feel about the, uh, the bike in the midlife crisis? I'll let you know when she starts to speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Guys, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Brilliant. Yeah, you've been great guests. And if you don't know, then you can catch Jagger and Woody on Real Radio. And um, it's different frequencies all over the yeah, country. Yeah, or you can get the Real Radio app on your, on your smartphone. Get the app. Indeed. Get the or app. just do that kind of search thing on your radio. Fantastic. Right, so it's between 6 and 10, isn't it? it is. Every day. Hence the early mornings. Mm. And to play us out on this week's show, we've got Elise Evans to take one more look at her fantastic blind audition on The Voice. Yeah, see you next week. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Thank you, bye. Oh, sometimes I get a feeling, yeah. Oh, Turn around, bye. I get a feeling that I n -n never, 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 never had before, no. But I just get a feeling. We're all going to go in. The Welsh Show is proudly sponsored by Music Wales, Wales' premier music company.